It's round about a similar time to when she would have been walking down the path recording this between 5 o'clock and 6 o'clock at night and that's about the time she went missing so I've tried to keep everything as similar as I can same sort of day, same sort of time to see what the walk would be like once before since it happened and I've climbed over the actual V and the actual V is a lot more of a prominent V shape than what we saw back there but maybe that people climbing over the wall over the years and um, natural stone erosion has worn it away a little bit maybe that is the actual V but I'll just walk down here a little bit further um, because the D that I remember seeing is a lot more prominent
like we were walking by there and a bit where those girls were standing um, taking a picture is the actual V in the hall um, but I didn't want to sort of do anything while the girls were standing there um, didn't want to make them feel nervous or uneasy or anything probably makes them nervous and uneasy enough to see a guy walking down this path with a GoPro camera on his head given what's previously happened down here so it's probably best just to walk by and let them do their business and then they'll come back up going about. We're almost at the new battle end of the track. You can see new battle there. Um, but I'll go back up and I'll hopefully get that area. New battle is the end of the track where Luke Mitchell lived, lived somewhere over there. And um, just at the entrance back there as we came onto the track, that was close to where Judy Jones lived. It's basically a three quarter mile track between them, which is interesting when you, you know, you look at that sort of distance, three quarters of a mile, you saw how quickly that I've walked that, I've walked that, you know, in not very many minutes at all, but if you look at the timings in the police report, Diamonds in the police report um, bring the police case into dispute because the timings in the police report in the context of when Luke was supposedly witnessed at the top of the path and when the murder supposedly took place and when he was seen at the other end of the track the timings are all very out of sync with such a short distance I don't think many people realise exactly how short this track actually is. Yeah, this is the sort of start of the track. The other interesting thing is that the murder happened sometime after five, sometime between five and six on that Monday. It's between five and six on a Monday just now. And you'll see when we get to the end of this track, there's a lot of traffic. And no matter what way you leave the murder scene, whether you leave at the east house end of the track, or whether you leave at the new battle end of the track, there's a hell of a lot of traffic. That's really sidey. You know, the police said themselves in the report that it would have been a bloodbath. And the person who did it would have been soaked in blood. Yet, they would have had to leave. By a big road like that, Luke Mitchell was somewhere up there. And there's a lot of traffic. You know, 
5 o'clock on a Monday on this road, everyone's going to be coming home from work, school, college. This road would have been heaving. And um, how a murderer would be able to come out of this track soaked in blood and run up there into new battle and not be seen as a bit of a sort of mystery to me. So just hang about here. There's some sunflowers put there in tribute to Dodie. I believe it was her favourite flower. So let's go back. Hopefully there won't be sort of anybody at the gap in the wall. It's actually quite a spooky track. It isn't really the sort of place that you'd want to be on your own. Um, there is a sort of uneasy feeling that you get. I don't know if you've ever been walking down a sort of isolated track like this on your own and you've got a sudden feeling of uneasiness. Um, that sort of feeling that you get overcome by on a track like this. Kind of like a feeling that someone's watching you, but you can't actually see them. That's a bit spooky, to say the least. Track, so I'm a bit cautious of time, which is why I'm speeding up a little. Apologies if the video is a bit squint. I think the GoPro is maybe a bit squint in my head. Didn't really have time to set it up properly. Still getting used to it. Really uneasy feeling. Can't imagine that young girl would have been too keen to walk this path on her own. <laughs> right, guys, so I've had to edit the video a little bit. Sorry, we got cut off there. I decided to stop the video at that point because when I was walking back towards the V shaped gap this time from the new bit at the end of the track. Those girls that were at the V-shaped gap earlier were still standing there, and um, yeah. Sorry, stop talking because those guys were passing. Yeah, when I walked back towards the V-shaped gap from the new battle into the track, those girls that were standing there earlier were still standing there, and. Essentially, <laughs> they ended up standing there for about half an hour, so I just cut the video and just went back to the car. Um, they were obviously doing something of their own there. So, hopefully it's quieter now. It's now a little bit later on in the day. It's now between, sometime between 6pm and 7pm. And again, it's a Monday when I'm filming. It's Monday the 28th of March, 2021. This has been filmed. It's sometime between 6 o'clock and 7 o'clock. Not sure of the exact time.
time because I don't have my phone with me. I've left my phone and my watch in the car. So see what they see. I'm not sure how straight the GoPro is in my head. I'm still getting used to it, so apologies if that's a wonky video. Now, one side of the track is just a field, but on the other side of the track, there's maybe like a six foot stone wall. Sort of sandstone wall, but six foot high. But essentially, People do want to cross over sometimes between the track and the woods and obviously not everybody is really capable of scaling a six foot stone wall so what some people do and what's very well known in local areas there's a V shaped gap in the wall which is quite easy to climb over and um, a lot of locals climb over a V shaped gap to get to what they would teach you want to. Um, Someone 
over the other side of the wall, there's like a dog coming down. In the documentary, the two police guys were over in this sort of area, um, and that's to your right hand side when you come over the wall. But from reading the police report, um, the search party, including Luke Mitchell and his dog, were up that way. And then Luke's dog got a smell of a dead body over the wall and came back to that V-shaped breach in the wall, put its hind legs up on the wall and indicated to the left. And according to the police report, Luke Mitchell came over the wall and turned to his left and the body was found somewhere down there, just under where those sort of branches come over the wall. And she was mutilated, but for some reason in the documentary, the police guys were up there. Don't know why. <laughs> uh, nothing the police or anyone associated with the police I know those two guys weren't actually in the police anymore but nothing associated with the police amazes me anymore um, I don't think they joined the police force for their brains unfortunately but as you can see no matter what school of thought you're from if you're from the school of thought that Luke Mitchell did it then Luke Mitchell's quite a bright boy. There's, I've shown you two possible exit routes that the murderer might have taken. Um, the new battle end of the path, which leads on to a busy road, which at five o'clock on a Monday would have been heaving with cars. And like it said in the police report, it would have been a bloodbath. Now, why would a murderer, soaked in blood, leave at an end of the path? So I think we presume that the murderer would have known the area. Why would the murderer leave the new battle end of the path onto a busy road soaked in blood and um, it would be seen and at the new battle end of the path why would you leave via the new battle end of the path um, again soaked in blood because I've shown you the new battle end of the path where I entered the track as well it's just like a not the new battle end these, day, these houses end of the track the other option why would you leave via these houses end when I first came onto the track because again, it's next to a busy road and at five o'clock on a Monday, it would have been heathen, it would have been seen covered in blood. So if you're from the school of thought that Luke Mitchell did it, Luke Mitchell's quite a bright boy, it's unlikely that he would, you know, he would know this area well, it's unlikely that he would leave via the new battle end of the track covered in blood, because he would be seen, he would know that there's a busy road there, and it's unlikely he would leave through the east house's end of the track, because he would know it's a busy road there, and he would know if he went out at either end of the track, east house's or new battle, he'd be entering onto a busy road covered in blood, and he'd be seen. So it's unlikely Luke Mitchell, if he was the killer, would have left at either end of the track. And if you're from the school of thought that Luke Mitchell didn't do it, then the murderer must have been obviously a very clever person because, well, he got away without being seen soaked in blood, didn't he? So that means that the murderer probably wouldn't have left onto a busy road at the new battle end or onto a busy road at least house's end. He would have had a bit more common sense to get if he got away with it for so long. So that leaves a third option. There is a third exit from here. Because if you look to my left, there's a big open field. And that field, on the other side of that field, is New Battle Abbey College. Now, you can see this is roughly about the same day and time as the murder took place. It's a Monday roughly about the same time. And that field, apart from the one dog walker we've seen, is completely deserted. There is a school of thought that what the murderer might have done is he may have had, you know, he was covered in blood, he may have had a bag hidden somewhere in this field, 
filled with a change of clothes and some cleaning products to clean himself up. He could have got himself out of his murder. So anyway guys, I'm going back over the beat in the third drink. <laughs> Sorry we got caught off there at my um, GoPro battery ran out. First time we got caught off was because of the girl standing at the gap in the wall. Second time was because my battery ran out. But anyway, what I was saying, whether the murderer was Luke Mitchell or not, Luke Mitchell would have been too intelligent to leave the path at the new battle end because he would have been covered in blood and he would have known at five, he knew the area and he would have known at sort of five o'clock on a Monday there'd be a lot of traffic and he'd be seen. And he would have been too intelligent to leave at the East House's end because again, it leads onto a busy road so at five o'clock on a Monday there would have been loads of traffic and he would have been seen covered in blood because it would have been a blood bath like the police said. And if a killer wasn't Luke Mitchell, the guy must have still been quite a clever guy because he managed to get away with it all these years. So he would have been too intelligent to leave at either end of the track because both live on, lead on to a busy road. So the third and final option is that he left this way. And what he could have done, you know, this leads on to a big open field. He could have had a bag waiting somewhere in this field. The bag might have had um, a change of clothes and some cleaning products to clean. So he can put some clean clothes on, get his bloodstained clothes off and clean his skin of any distinguishable blood and then just lay low in this field somewhere until it gets dark because the body wasn't found until... The body wasn't found over there until it had gone nightfall. It was a lot later on, it was about four or five hours later and he could have lay low there till it got dark. I think it was getting dark about nine o'clock at night then. The body wasn't found till well after that. He could have lay low in that field till it got dark and then just went. You know, and that leads on to New Battle Abbey College and if it was a student at the college that done it then he could have just lay low at the college. You know, there's various escape routes in the area you're in. Um, but anyway, I've been at this site for over an hour now so I think I better call it quick. Um, I think I've been lucky enough to get away with filming this for as long as I have and to be honest with you it's really uneasy and it's really spooky and it's not a place you want to be <laughs> and it's starting to get dark. Um, so sorry we got caught off the last time, the GoPro battery ran out and I had to go back to the car to charge it but it's now starting to get late and this is not a place that I want to be after nightfall so I'm going to go. Okay, thank you for watching, bye for now.